en medio del desierto de Arizona, hay un científico que intenta alcanzar las respuestas para develar qué es la mente y explicar cómo se produce la conciencia. El profesor Stuart Hameroff es anestesista y director de los estudios de conciencia en la Universidad de Arizona, Tucson. El profesor Hameroff trabajó con el físico británico Sir Roger Penrose en el desarrollo de una teoría acerca de la conciencia que nos acerque a la comprensión de cómo y cuándo ocurre una experiencia de casi muerte. Cuando un paciente es anestetizado, están completamente inconscientes. They feel no pain, they have no awareness and no memory. Unlike sleep, there's no dreaming, and if someone takes a knife to them, they don't feel it. So it's different than sleep. The brain is still active, there's electrical activity, but it's kind of like a motor idling, the clutch is in. The brain is telling the lungs to breathe, the brain is telling the heart to work, the brain is doing all kinds of things, but the thing that's missing is consciousness. So it, it's a good way of actually separating, isolating consciousness from other brain functions, which is why understanding anesthesia is a big clue to understanding consciousness. El profesor Hameroff estudió microscópicamente pequeñas estructuras conocidas como microtúbulos, ubicados dentro de las células que forman el cerebro. En este nivel microscópico es donde él cree que el cerebro produce la mente. The inside of cells, including nerve cells, are comprised of a network or forest of girders or cylindrical structures called microtubules that self-assemble to form the shape of the cell. They are also the nervous system of the cell and process information internally to organize what happens within each cell and also how cells interact with other cells. These microtubules are actually very well designed as computational devices. Hameroff sugiere que los microtúbulos son computadoras incorporadas que organizan la actividad celular dentro del cerebro. Él estudió el comportamiento y la estructura de los microtúbulos y cree que actúan como computadoras cuánticas. The quantum world at the level of atoms and below, for example, has some very strange properties. For example, everything can be interconnected to everything else. Particles can be in two or more places at the same time, a process called superposition. So in a quantum computer, information can be in two states at the same time. Esta capacidad de estar en dos sitios a la vez, conocida como superposición de geometría espacio-tiempo, es propiedad fundamental y la verdadera trama del universo. The fundamental level of the universe is so infinitesimally small that it's impossible to even imagine. But if we go down in size scale, for example, from our brains to our nerve cells, into the microtubules, and then inside the microtubule subunits to the level of atoms, and then keep going down even smaller than atoms, because atoms are mostly empty space, the space between the nucleus and the electrons, down and down and down, everything is smooth. But eventually we reach a level where there's some kind of coarseness or irregularity. This may be something like, imagine you're in an airplane looking at the surface of the ocean from 33,000 feet. The surface of the ocean looks very smooth. However, if you were in a boat on that surface, it'd be very choppy. And there's a pattern, obviously, in the waves in the surface of, of the ocean. Similarly, when we get down to this fundamental level of the universe, there's information, there's patterns, and that information carries conscious precursors that give rise to our complex consciousness. Es aquí, en el nivel más básico del universo, en lo profundo del cerebro, donde Hameroff y Penrose creen que se produce la conciencia. Su teoría se basa en un bien establecido campo de la ciencia, las leyes de relatividad general descubiertas por Einstein. Thank <laughs> you.